If you travel around and across Tucson, you'll see that it's an urban area that's not super developed. There are places all over inside the city where there are still rabbits running around, there's still javelina. It lends itself to people having more connection just to the dirt and what's here. Tucson. The name alone conjures images of blazing sunsets, sprawling yet vital deserts, and the stately saguaro cacti. It's a city shaped by the land it sits on. Set in a flat valley hemmed in by Snaggletooth Mountains, Arizona's second largest city celebrates indigenous, Spanish, Mexican, and English traditions. The dry desert heat draws thousands of tourists here in the winter months. And while the city boasts thriving college, university, and military communities, small businesses can face struggles as the economy tries to rebuild after the recession of 2008. Yet all around the city of Tucson, the land is a constant reminder of what the city is and what it could be. So why would someone choose to do business here, in Tucson, and nowhere else? Traditional wood carver Luis Valenzuela crafts masks, which are used in Yucky Pascola dance and prayer rituals. He's one of the only remaining UME Yucky carvers in the U.S., and Tucson's cottonwood trees allow him to pass on his tribe's stories and skills. Right now we're heading to the Empire Ranch, and it's a historical place where they have done a lot of Western movies. But we're going to a location where there'll be part like a forest, a cottonwood, and that's the traditional wood I use for my traditional carvings. If we're lucky, we'll see a white-tailed deer here. The women represents the people in our language and the mass carving. It's part of the our traditional beliefs. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bless the cottonwood. So right now I'm gonna burn some sage. We ask permission to take the piece of wood. And that's very important that we honor Mother Nature and respect Mother Nature the way we're taught as indigenous people. I'll do the bottom. I was raised on the south side of Tucson. My parents brought me here at the young age. I learned a lot about the history of our culture as I started learning about the carving and the process of it. I asked some elders that were carving some Pascola masks. I wanted to know the symbolism and the story behind the Pascola mask. Mr. Jesus Acuna, my mentor, he gave me a piece of cottonwood and manchete and told me to go for it. It was hard because I didn't know what I was doing, but I hit it with the machete and, you know, it was my first mask, so I was happy and proud of it. People have asked me for many years, do you have all your fingers? I said, yeah. Almost hit my toe once, but I had steel toes, so I was lucky. In my life as an indigenous artist, a lot of the images I do in my art come through dreams that I have. Sometimes I wake up early in the morning just to do a rough figure of what came to me. When I pick up a piece of cottonwood, I already see the image there. I just gotta bring it out. I realize that the art is me and much just my culture and my nation. It's very important for me to pass it down to the younger generation because once I'm gone, it's a lost art. And that's what I'm afraid of. People have asked me how many masks I made, how many carvings. I lost count on that too. At one point I was making from 20 to 25 masks a day, believe it or not, by myself. So these are the three traditional colors right here. The white represents purity, or the white candle of every human life. The black represents death, and the red represents the bloodshed between the Yaqui and the Mexican Revolution when it started. We're taught to use the three traditional colors in our life. When they go home and they put that piece of artwork on their shelf with a piece of mass on their wall, 
they're getting a blessing because all the peace they have done are blessed. That's going to represent the UIMA culture, the city of Tucson, and it's going to represent me. With a background in molecular biology and a passion for modifying stock 4x4s, Jeff Bullock took his obsession and created Ballistic Fabrication in Tucson, a company that manufactures custom components for off-roading vehicles. Personally, I, I love off-roading. That's, that's how I started the business. And Arizona is basically world-renowned for having these extreme trails. There are trails everywhere you look. There's waterfalls, you know, the rock faces and cliffs that you can go up. You can test the limits of your creation any way you want here. Ballistic Fabrication, we are a manufacturing firm. We cater mostly to the off-road customer that is looking to take our product and basically adapt it to their custom vehicles. So they're trying to get a ready-built product to just you know slam on their vehicles and push out, and that's where we really excel. We have lasers, we have eight CNC machines on the floor, and really, we're a very lean manufacturing company. Everyone's very specialized in their own department and very good at what they do. Come on through here. This is going to be our machine shop area slash laser area. We used to have a lot of different robotic arms and different type of systems that did a lot of our welding for us. It was great, but my opinion and Jeff's opinion, we trust our welder's hand more than we trust the machine. You can see here we have one of our truss systems, our 14 bolt shave kits that we're getting set up for our customer. One of our most popular products as well. Yeah, I did that truss over the weekend. That thing is pretty much bomb proof, I think. The technology that we have at the business allows our customers to really build whatever they want. So they could be a multitude of hobbies that we can cater to. Now we're heading up for some four-wheel action. But we got 200 people to RSVP. It should be a pretty good event. Hello. Mom's at the door, keeps going, filling up the truck, and then we'll be down there, OK? Sounds like we'll be there about the same time. All right, see ya. Bye. Okay, bye. That was my dad. And I let my dad borrow my Jeep. And I think he's ready to sort of do some payback on me for all the times I ruined his vehicles as a kid. <laughs> So it looks like we got a ton of vehicles. Well, guys, we thought we'd do the repairs in the parking lot. Well, that's kind of what happens, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of how that works out. 2009 was the last time we did something like this, and, and it wasn't anything close to this. I'm real surprised to see so many off-road vehicles. I mean, they just keep coming in to connect more with the community. It's been real nice. Now put it in the drive. It says for the drive. Yep, you're good. You're low enough. OK. Cool. cool. We're ready to have fun. All right, we're doing it. It's up right now. I love the desert. I love being out here to really soak in just the beauty here. It really strikes me. off-roading and ballistic fabrication. It's nice because we really can bring what we're thinking on paper to practice. When you're joining man and machine, your own creation that you built, it's exhilarating. This really consumes my life. It really does. So this is a Chapelote corn. This is what I call root beer colored, but you can see it's just that gorgeous kernel color. I love it. You can't get closer to the land than native seeds search. Working in conjunction with indigenous communities and local farmers, the company aims to educate, preserve, and share the region's historic crops, which are so central to Tucson's culture and indigenous heritage. Native Seeds is a nonprofit that was founded here in Tucson. The seeds in the collection today represents the different farming and cultural traditions of over 50 indigenous groups in the southwest and into central Mexico, as well as Mormon farmers. Um, and even today, we're adding new plants to the collection. 
Many of these varieties were at risk of being lost. They were being replaced by more contemporary hybrid seeds and today more GMO seeds. Just like a language evolves and leaves words in its past, these seeds that were well adapted to this region and these people, they started to fall out of use. Language, community connections, agriculture is a thread that can tie those things together. This is one of the oldest archaeological sites in the United States where there is evidence of agriculture. Many, many fruits were grown. Folks can come in, volunteers can come in, students can come in and see and learn with us and with our farmers how these crops grow best. We are in what we call the vault or the cold room. So we have two compartments here. The one we're standing in right now is where we keep seeds that we are in use or in distribution currently. And then over here we have our original seed in some of these bags here and then our regeneration samples that have been grown and indexed are, are over here. Um, and it's, it's really cold. I can't stand here without, without my parka on. We have about 1,900 different accessions. Accession means it was collected in a particular place at a particular time. We've got over 570 different kinds of corn and almost 500 different kinds of beans. It's just amazing that we have that and that we're trying to keep that going. We don't just want to conserve the seeds in the seed bank as a collection, but we understand that in order for the crops to really be conserved, that they need to be used and grown by people today. Uh, we're headed out to Ransom Ranch to meet Marcia Gibbons, who's one of the growers that Native Seeds works with to regenerate our seed collection. It's a location where some of the seeds in the collection come from, so we're really glad to have them growing again here. Hi there, Marsha. Hi, Nicholas. Good morning. <laughs> these are Bisbee Gray cowpeas, and I grew these for Native Seed Search. We got a lot to, to eat, and they got plenty to pass on. And Now we have this plant that thrives in the desert. You yes. can eat the greens. You can eat the beans green. Well, my whole bent here for growing is find out what grows well here and then cook it and like it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our retail space. We've got our seeds and we've got gardening books. This is both a community center and a retail store. So people come in and they want gardening advice and they can get that. I don't think anybody else in Tucson or even more broadly is doing just what we do, which is what makes us unique. Native Seeds provides thousands of seed packets per year for free to community groups throughout the Southwest. We also offer any Native American resident of the Southwest free access to seeds. I've really been interested in going back to my Hopi roots. Last year we went to the, the farm and volunteered, but yeah, that's why we're here in at Native Seed Search. For us, it's like a Tucson pilgrimage and come here. Learning the different types of foods and how they prepared it and made it. And a lot of the Native peoples, there's a gap in uh, this knowledge. My mother and my grandmother were products of the boarding school era. And um, I lost my language, my culture. And Native Seeds is um, helping me to, like, just everything they're learning about their indigenous ways. It's helping us grow. It helps us talk with each other. And so it's um, a lot of healing going on. And I'm really grateful, you know. To share that biodiversity, we're keeping the power of plant breeding back in the community, too. Drawing from the land, its bounty, and the inspiration it gives, these entrepreneurs continue to reflect Tucson's unique culture. I would describe Tucson as occupying maybe a different time than other places. It's intentionally laid back. 
There's a meshing of cultures that shows up in the food and, and how we think of ourselves and how we get together and celebrate. I never plan to leave Tucson. It's a great place. It supports our manufacturing. It has great people here. And we're getting a lot more activity here than we would elsewhere. I feel like it's chosen me at this point. As an artist in Tucson, this is hard. I mean, a lot of people say, it's amazing that you never walked away from it. But in my heart, it's about my people and what I have to do to keep our tradition going.